I have two eye trackers here. I have the PCI device down there, and then the Toby IX here. And what I'm hoping I can duplicate here is the PCI not working as good as the IX. And considering the IX is uh, 25 times cheaper and does not include any accessibility related um, software, that's a pretty big deal to me. I bought this PCI for my dad with ALS and it doesn't sense his eyes very reliably. He can probably get a square about that big. It drifts around a lot and it's not as stable. And I thought it had something to do with him. But when I test both of these, this one seems to be a lot more stable. Using the iX software for both trackers only because I want something comparable between the two. You know, the iX software will work with both eye trackers, but the PCI software will only work with the PCI. The PCI has all this Windows integration technology. It's also natively supported by the grid. The PCI is not supported by the grid, even though it shows up in the grid. First time you try to calibrate, it'll give you some weird error and then disappear. So, here, let's do the calibration for the PCI. Now, what we'll do is click recalibrate. I'm pretty much smack dab in the middle of the track box. I've got both eyes visible and they're both pretty stable. So we'll click next. I'll follow the dot with my eyes. And then now look at the accuracy after calibration has been completed. In the middle circle, I'm probably it, it varies. I'm trying to look at the center of the circle. Here, you hold this camera. I, I'm not sure I'm Okay, I'm keeping my head as dead still as I can, looking at the center circle, and I'm already outside. This is actually the worst calibration. Oh, there, it's coming closer. I'm really looking at these dots as good as I can. And so it's, it's pretty close to them. I mean, um... I don't know why sometimes it drifts way outside of the track box. Maybe it's because I'm talking, but this doesn't happen with the PCI. So I'm looking at these as dead solid and steady as I can. And every once in a while, see now we're outside of the track box. I don't know why, look down, look up, but before, earlier you just saw it being inside. So we will, kind of MacGyver this tracker into position, um, unplug the PCI. I can't have my keyboard plugged into the USB hub because during the calibration process I guess the Toby takes too much power and it will disconnect the, the, P, the IX. So settings, we're not covering any of the LEDs and even if we are it's going to be better anyway, so who cares? So we'll adjust this to put my eyes in the middle of the track box. Right about there. We'll calibrate. I'm going to follow the dot exactly the same. Now one of the points, this point in this area, now see I'm looking at the middle one, most of these dots are dead on. Oops. Tracker disconnected. Back. But I can repeatedly get a much better 
calibration. Every time these kids run around the room, it shakes the eye tracker, but the dots are much closer to the target and they never go outside. And this calibration wasn't even good because when I went from this dot to this dot, my eyes moved to this dot before it had, you know, I was anticipating it. So the calibration, too much shaking on the floor. Anyway, if this eye tracker were actually mounted instead of just wiggling down there, it, every time it wiggles, it shifts the dot around, but this is still way more accurate. So why is the $99 tool apparently more accurate than the $2,500 one? And what can be done about it? Because the most accurate one is not supported by, um, by the grid.